Oh my god. Oh shit, we're on. Shit, we're live. <laughs> I'm not ready. I'm not ready. I'm not ready. Okay, I'm ready. Hello and welcome to Australian Transformers Weekly. We are your first choice for Australian Transformers news. We might be your only choice. We haven't quite decided yet. This is episode 119. We're recording live on August 11th, 2017. It is well into the night on the Friday night. So uh, if any of us fall asleep, like Brad, please <laughs> forgive us. It was that one time. I mean, come on. <laughs> uh, there's, there's, there's two times. <laughs> Yeah, but it was you one after the other you didn't in the same second podcast, time. right? Funnily um, enough, that wouldn't yeah. be the first time I've been on a podcast where someone actually fell asleep for the entire podcast and you could hear them snoring on the podcast. And it was <laughs> hilarious. We could hear Brad snoring too. It's okay. Yeah. Like it's a it's a thing that <laughs> happened in the past. Uh welcome Brad. Welcome Mikey. How are you doing? You can go first, Mikey. Can go oh, okay. First. No, I'm good. Everyone's um, too polite this week. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Um, yeah, I've been good, uh, relatively busy week, um, nothing really too heavy Transformer related this week for me, but, uh, yeah, pretty light actually. It's been a, it's been a long week for me. I woke up on Tuesday morning and went, ah, oh, I'm so happy. It's the second day of my weekend. It's Sunday. Ah, oh, crap. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I was about, what? <laughs> And then I and then I was then I was then I realized I'm gonna have to get up and go to work and it's gonna be another five days until I can actually have a sleep in and a weekend off. So five? Tuesday, Sorry, Wednesday, Tuesday. Thursday, Friday, Friday, then Saturday. Saturday? You have yeah. you work on Saturday? No. Really? Five <laughs> <laughs> What? You said five days if it's Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. And then Saturday, and, I get to sleep in. And then do it on Saturday. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. That's where I got a bit lost there. Uh, apparently so. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Brad, what have you been up to? Uh, yeah, busy week. Um, about to wrap up all the elections and everything for the uh, committee and the club. And, um, yeah, brought myself a kayak, so I'm going to go fishing in the morning once I finally drag me butt out of bed. Question. Do you catch much fish whenever you go fishing? I do now. Okay, well... Okay. Now that he has Maybe a kayak. Um, well, just, Instead of just walking into the water and hoping... <laughs> Terminator style. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, because whenever I go fishing on a boat, I really never catch anything, which sucks. Well, I, call, I catch one thing, but, it, you know, if they're under 30 centimetres, you can't keep them. So, That's no good captain. Come fish with me, Mike. I'll guarantee you a fish. Okay, I'll get down to Victoria ASAP. <laughs> I... I I have a friend at work who um, does quite a lot of fishing and, and stuff. So, like, yeah, he's just always like, yeah, it's the weekend. I'm going to go fishing. Yeah. Um, and he apparently yep. fishes quite successfully too. So, hmm. Hmm. Um, it's been a long week for me, like I said, Tuesday morning to now. And uh, I've, just, I've just been constantly busy since. So I'm looking forward to unwinding for the weekend. And um, maybe looking at a little bit of some Transformer stuff. So uh, we, we talked a little bit about the, the shelves in the collection behind me last week and I kind of finished. I, um, Yay. I put stuff on the shelves. If I tilt this down, it's no longer a mess. Like you can actually see. Oh, nice. The... Oh, <coughs> excuse me. Um, let me just pick that up. There we go. So there's a nice little collection. And there's, a, there's the pile of things that are for sale there. Um, yeah, so I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to try and make sure that my camera doesn't fall off again. There we go. So spacey. Yeah, I know, right? I like, I like having space between some things. There's, there's a few things that I think I need to revisit now. Um, I realized I realized last week that um, I could go to Daiso and get a few things to sort of help elevate some things on platforms on the, on the shelves. So I'm probably going to go and revisit that and get a few more of those. But, uh, yeah. Is Daiso like Ikea? Daiso, you don't know what Daiso is? It's like it's a shop that where everything is $2.80 except for some things that are $3.80 and then there's even fewer things that are $4.80. I think they go up to $8.80 now. But, and they uh, sell shelves. They sell little acrylic risers for $2.80. Oh, yes, right. Fair enough. So last weekend when I, was, when I was sort of in the middle of setting this all up, I went out on Saturday night and I went into Muji and I found Muji has a few interesting acrylic shelves but the typical thing with acrylic is that it's really quite expensive. And so Muji's got these shelves that are sort of like, you know, this long and have, have a couple of shelves. And um, they're like 50 bucks because acrylic is expensive. 
And also, I've just realized that I've got the run sheet on my screen there. <laughs> Uh, I'll put that up instead. Um, yeah, and so like acrylic is expensive. And so um, Muji has real acrylic and Daiso, I, they sell things and say they're acrylic stands, but I don't think they're real acrylic. I think they're just plastic molded. Um, but yeah, they're, they're quite handy. Um, if I had something within reach, I could show you. I live near you and I have no idea where these places are, what, what these places are. <laughs> Muji and what? You need to get some of those. Um, those so, so, this, so this is the kind of thing that you buy from Daiso, yeah, right? Right, um, Daiso. So like this is two dollars eighty, and like they say it's acrylic. I don't know; it might just be plastic, but it's very handy for like putting figures on, and okay. it's got a fair base, so you can usually fit a figure on it. Like if I pick up, oh, I'm not going to figure out the place. But for those like, that don't know the difference between broad and bought, isn't acrylic and plastic? Oh my stuff? god. No, they're not the same thing. <laughs> okay. So, so you can you can put a deluxe on mm. uh, on a Muji stand. This is one of the large stands. Mm. You put a deluxe on them fairly well, and you could you can fit the feet in and pose on them fairly well. So, okay. um, it's really useful if you're trying to put together a display and you want to try to avoid that crowding effect by raising some uh, figures up. Yeah. The other thing that I've done, which is kind of a cheat, um, is I've got some figures because the shelves are white. I've just got them on polystyrene blocks. So that's actually, that actually actually works really well, but I, w I don't want to do it too much because you can sort of tell that they're on polystyrene. So and then you get all the shit on your hands whenever you touch them. No, no, no. They're, no, they're, they're, they're solid. They're solid blocks of polystyrene. They're not falling apart or anything. But, ah, okay. Um, Until the cat finds them. <laughs> no, <laughs> he, he, he's not going to get them up on the top shelf. So yeah. That's what you think. <laughs> uh, no, that's what. No, that's what I know. I know. I know about how high he can jump. So yeah, and generally like. He's not really that interested in jumping on things when he can see that there are things there and he doesn't know if there's actually space for him to jump up. So he tends to avoid them unless he's trying to annoy me. <laughs> <laughs> well, my dog bit me today when he was being naughty, so that was fun. Oh, I bet he got in trouble. Oh, I smacked him on the nose. <laughs> <laughs> I, um, I, 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 had a, I had a puppy come and visit me in the office today. Um, where is my... I think this is this is going to make for an excellent podcast. Well, someone, <laughs> there we go. So there's a there's a photograph of me holding a holding a uh, gorgeous little puppy in the office today. <laughs> oh, oh, those ones are so cute. I know. Uh, the best thing is his name is Cinnamon. So <laughs> he looks like Cinnamon. Yeah, yeah, right. He does, doesn't he? <laughs> so yeah. So yeah, I've had a I've had a I've had a busy week and. Um, uh, and some had some doggos come past in the office. It's been good. So Love yeah, a good doggo. Yeah, I know, right? Um, should we uh, should we get a move on? Talk about some Transformers stuff. Let's do it. All right. First thing up this week, as usual, is the uh, the results of the uh, Transformers Collectors Club Australia Facebook group Take Your Bot to Work Day. It is the uh, competition where we invite people to submit a bot in the real world, and so. Uh, this week's winner. This week's winner. Well done to Daryl Anderson for Robots in Disguise. Thunderhoof meeting his uh, inspirational farming equipment. There, um, <laughs> one of those. Uh, one of those looks slightly deadlier than the other. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Yeah, nice job. Um, I don't know whether I don't know whether or not Daryl's actual farming equipment speaks with a New York uh, mafia accent or not, but. Um, <laughs> Good on, good on you, choice, Thunderhawk. Yeah. No, I like how it's job. blue as well. It's, this, oh, it's almost the same blue as Thunderhawk yeah, as well. The little Ford... um, cockpit. Oh, it is too. I didn't even yeah. notice. Yeah, yeah mm. it's Ford Tractor. Yeah. <laughs> they're that, they're that yes. color blue. So the older cool. ones are. So Daryl goes, uh, goes into the into the next draw for a prize. We had, we had one, what was it, at about 15 or 16 weeks we, uh, we drew a prize, Brad? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So it's going to be a little while before. Probably yeah, one around thirty. Yeah. Look, it'll be a little while till the next one, but um, yeah, we're getting there. So uh, yeah, if you want to be in, if you want to be in it, basically you need to go into the Facebook discussion group, and every Wednesday, Brad posts up a uh, take your bot to work day. You don't have to have a workplace; just take your bot out of its shelf, put it out in the real world somewhere, and uh, show it off. And generally, you'll find that the fun poses are the ones that win. So be a little bit creative. And get in there early. <laughs> yeah, if you get so if you get in there early, 
more people will see your post and like it. So like generally, it's probably good to be you know right there after Brad uh, after Brad posts the thread. <laughs> if I remember to. <laughs> That is also sometimes a problem. Let's uh, <laughs> let's get on and talk about. <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> and again, let's get on and talk about some news, shall we? Um, we've seen official issue. If you there, official images finally <laughs> of the uh, Transformers tribute hmm. Bumblebee three pack. Um, remember what? Remember what we were just saying about uh, getting figures off the ground and raising figures. Hmm. There is the uh, 2016 Chevrolet Camaro raised up off the uh, off the workbench floor. Mm. I like Although this. Although how much I hate, you know, the whole we get way too many Bumblebees thing, this set looks like they, they delivered this set awesomely, like that box set. I don't want to open that. That looks pretty cool, doesn't I wanna it? Just, I want to display that just like that because it's got like a shed that can close. And That's... That's just a nice cool. history of the Camaro without even... Yeah. It's not even a history of Bumblebee. <laughs> yeah. Um, are, these, are these figures are these figures actually new or are they, are they just repaints? Because, like, I don't remember Bumblebee being a, a 67 and a 77 Chevrolet. Yeah. Yeah, that's well, the well, first movie. That's the first movie bot. Although, no, fair enough. I'm pretty sure the first movie one had Russ, so we got a new paint scheme here on him. Mm. <clears throat> um, and then all the... Bottom two are both from AOE, AOE mold. So, um, well, I don't remember having these the big Autobot symbol on the Stealth Camaro toy, but um, the mold versus the paint job, right? Yeah, so, yeah. They, they, I think they've, they've all got a little bit of different paint on than the proper ones. So, um, Transformers Tribute is coming out when this this set so we've already got the transformers tribute optimus prime set out because we've seen that kieran has posted that in the group he's got it from overseas but um yeah i don't actually i don't actually see anything in the story but that tells us when when the figures are being released that's been next month or so let's go for soon shall we yep yes fair enough um now one of the things that came out this week um was uh, so we heard last week some news let's move on to the next story sorry um and that wasn't meant to be the next story this this one is uh we're going to jump to this one the um so we had some transformers robots in disguise uh there was a q a with um what's the guy's name uh, adam adam beechen and uh there's been a bit of bit of news come out recently about the end or the looming end of transformers uh, rid and uh, it seems so. When we, we saw the reveal last week that Transformers Cyberverse is going to be the next series that's going to take place, it's going to come in next year. So, Robots in Disguise is going to wrap up all of its storylines. But, uh, Brad, you, you you called out that there's no actual confirmation of which storylines will be wrapped up. It's just the they said the important ones. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and. Yeah, so Hasbro says that they want to try something new with um, Cyberverse, so they're going to be bringing in new voice actors. And whether or not that means that there's not going to be Prime or Megatron or, you know, I mean, we've had a whole series without Megatron, actually, with um, mm. R.I.D. So uh, that's mainly because it's set in the Prime universe where uh, Megatron has renounced his evil ways and left <clears throat> at the end of Transformers Prime. So we may, it depends whether or not Cyberverse is actually going to be a follow-on to R.I.D. or if it's going to be its own series. I'm not sure whether or not that actually, whether or not that was actually dealt with in this uh, in this Q&A. Did you, did you get anything like any of that sense, Brad? No, there was nothing. Basically, the only real stuff they said about Cyberverse was that um, with R.I.D., they sort of changed up a little bit from Prime, but they wanted to, um, wanted to try new things here with uh, Cyberverse and... Um, which include new voice actors. So um, there wasn't there wasn't a lot to it. There was a lot of spoiler stuff um, with some storylines with Soundwave, Steeljaw, and the Sonicons that are sort of out there lingering mm -hmm. and not really taking part. That um, he couldn't really confirm or deny. He just said the important ones were going to get wrapped up. So that's probably confirming that we're only going to see Soundwave once and never again. <laughs> so he's still in the shadow zone. Well, you know, uh, uh, did, so they went to a lot of effort to actually bring out a new Soundwave toy. Have they not actually, I haven't been watching the show, have they not brought him back into the show? Up until what I've seen, no. I've yeah. only one or two into season three, so. Sorry about that. Um, they are, 
So basically, this whole sound wave thing is um, that he's been sending mini cons, which aren't really cassette cons, um, to go and find Decepticon hunters to try and, I guess, bring him back to life or something. They haven't really. Um, so basically, all he does is like a, a space bridge or something opens. You hear his voice. A little mini con comes out. They steal the Decepticon hunter. I think he's now got them all from from the episode that I've watched. That's like. Uh, what was the last episode? I can't remember, but that was the last one. So hopefully, maybe the next episode, Soundwave will make an appearance. But um, maybe. that's, well, that's yeah, been a if thing. That's been a whole is. series thing. Season. Yeah. Well, if he's if it if that's a major part of the story, then he's sure to return. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no. It, yeah. Totally. It's like it was like in season one. They're like, "Oh my god, we have to stop Megatronus doing this. We have to stop." Oh no, we haven't stopped him. Okay, here he comes. <laughs> and then they deal with him in within one episode. So like, uh, hey, animating new characters is expensive, right? Yeah, mm-hmm. but it was very it was a letdown because they they spent like five, three or three or five episodes, you know, building him up, and then they defeated him way too easily. And, and he's supposedly, you know, the bloody, um, this is the fall one basically, and they they mm-hmm. did it so easily. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's right. Never return. <laughs> no. So like, um, I. I, I is he never to return? No, hasn't returned I, so far. No. Okay. I thought uh, I, I thought I saw someone saying that he was going to come back or something. Mm. He could. I don't know. But as far they haven't mentioned him coming back or anything like that, so he might. I don't know. All right. <clears throat> so uh, there's been a little bit of uh, a teensy little bit of masterpiece news this week. Should we uh, should we get into that? Mm-hmm. If we must. <laughs> <laughs> if we masterpiece. <laughs> So uh, last week we saw mentioned that uh, Masterpiece MP40 was going to be uh, the Target Master version of MP28 Rodimus, and this week we actually have pictures that show uh, yes, indeed, it is a it is going to be a reuse of the MP28 mold. He's got his colours tweaked slightly, so he is what we would consider animation correct. As opposed to the uh, as opposed to the original MP28 hot rod that I think was more toy correct than animation. Uh, um, I think, I think, I think I, uh, actually no, I think I think hot rod uh, MP28 was actually hot rod animation colors. These these ones are actually Rodimus Prime's colors, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So although it is still the hot rod, it's darker. It is darker. Dark, oh, it's okay. darker maroon, and he does have the white nappy. Kind of. Yes. I was wondering if that was white or just. Is it less flare or is no? It's white. Yeah, I've seen it in the other photo. Yeah. Silly. yeah, no, it's definitely white. So, um, it looks like a nappy. Yeah, well, no, that, that, you know, that's what people have called it. So, there's a um, there is a target master with him, uh, and that is about it. And so, apparently, this is actually the target master that uh, the yes. Hasbro version of Masterpiece Rodimus Prime. That is with. correct. Just mm-hmm. a little, like way less paint. Yep, and. Mm-hmm. Uh, unlike, uh, yeah, so, yeah, <coughs> excuse me. So, uh, yeah, it's going to be a repaint, and it's anime correct, but it is not MP28+. plus. Oh. <laughs> oh, don't tell me there's another to come. Well, so, like, yeah, but, but they've, they've been saying that the plus editions are the anime correct ones. We do have, we do have a, a plus sideswipe coming out later yeah. this year with uh, animation yeah. correct colors. We yeah. had uh, Red Alert. Last year, and um, yeah. Hmm. Uh, so look, uh, does look, anyone else look? Takara's co- Takara's copped a lot of hate about this. I'm gonna get it. I like okay. I, I like the colors. Um, I'm not. I, I've never really been too fussed with Hot Rod as a target master, but whatever. But right. like, I like I like the colors, and I like the I like the mold as well. So uh, oh, yeah. I'm I'm gonna get it. I'll agree with you. This is a very good mold. Um, mm. Although some people don't like it, they say he's got kind of gorilla arms, but I guess he kind of does. And like his weight, like his legs, maybe a bit too. That's not too a very up. graceful photo of him. There, it doesn't no, even show his ankle tilts. That's better. The one that the poses that I have him in, it looks great. I love the transformation. Um, I don't really like the gimmick of the whole Matrix holding thing because he never really did that, and it also could have possibly made the chest a little bit more. I don't know, different because it's kind of a bit flat. But other than that, I, I love the original one. It comes with a lot of great accessories. This one only comes with an extra gun, one, one of the two guns that came with uh, this mold. And Yeah, uh, so all, all the accessories will be gone in place of that target yep. master. So. Yep, yep, yep. So no fishing rod, no buzzsaw. Um, yeah, that was great it. guns. 
yeah, yeah, one yeah, of them's got less gun. Yeah. He comes this one in a in a photo you can see he comes with one Moran gun. So he, one, yeah, yeah, so one. But yeah, I, I I don't see the point of it, especially this soon, I guess. Um but uh, hey, if you want yeah. it, go ahead and get it. Um, but if I you guess. missed out on twenty eight, I'd say try and find it. I was gonna say if you miss out on twenty eight, just go and order it like it's everywhere. True. Yeah. Yeah. I don't I don't yeah. I don't, uh, I don't know. Maybe if you're a big fan of Target Masters, go ahead. That's another good thing. Yeah. Um, but you could have you could have surely found an old Hasbro one that's had its knees explode and everything else and just stole the or brought it for MP, off for, eBay for or MP9, something. Sure. Yeah, I mean, if you can do that. MP9 is yeah. the one that had the knees explode, not 28. But yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. He, he's saying yeah, find to that. Get, find, to get the Target yeah. Master. To get the Target Master. Mm. To add to your 28. Oh, for the hat. Yeah, I would. I just actually. Yeah. You know what, I just would have preferred Those actually goes for a lot, Brad. I don't know. <laughs> well, yeah, there you go. Do. Don't do that. Don't do don't that. Don't do that. It was, you'll pay about 60 bucks for a Target Master, and you don't really want to do that. This is going to be 100 and 100. Yeah, but you also get Erotimus. On eBay, you're paying 60 bucks for a, you know. Yeah, but you've already got 28. <laughs> don't. Anyway. I, okay. <laughs> yeah, okay. Anyway, yeah. I, I would have preferred Erotimus Prime out of 40, but anyway. Eventually, hopefully. It's the year of the repaints and reissues, so it certainly, we'll it certainly does it. seem to be, doesn't it? But it's going to continue into next year because this this will be what January or February released. Yeah, yeah, I believe so. Yeah, well, that's the next. I'm happy that's the next to, story as well. I'm happy to, you know, I'm glad this is another masterpiece release and it's just something again that I don't have to buy. So mm. I'm kind of happy with it that way because, like, they they seem to like this year. Well, last year and. The, the, like the starters of this year start like rolling out a lot more frequently, but now they've seemed to slow down a lot, and I'm kind of happy about that because I kind of need a little bit of time to just gather my, I guess, money, and then decide what to get. And then they just, I'm glad that they're you know, like slowing down, I guess. Yeah, that five or six releases here just didn't give you a lot of wiggle room. Mm. I think it's, I think at some point there was we were seeing like seven or eight releases a year. Like, yeah, don't 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 forget like the Tar Takara Tami Mall exclusives. They do yeah. count, uh, and some of the convention exclusives. So, like last year, we had uh, Thunderjet, the Thunderjet, Thundercracker, and Ramjet. And this year, we've had Dirge. The last year, there was Loud Pedal as well. And those, yeah. those were not, you know, those were sort of like uh, off, you know, off axis, off axis, you know, off center releases because they weren't the general here. You know, we're releasing this figure and everything, but they're still masterpieces that we all rushed out to get, right? Not yeah. to forget. We also do have the Beast Wars and movie masterpieces as well. So, yeah. So, so we've had I, two I'm, new I'm movie okay. masterpieces. Yeah, I'm okay with the movie masterpieces taking some of the uh, some of the uh, focus for the rest of this year. Yeah, yeah. I, I because there's a lot of characters that definitely need toy like a good toy like Blackout and Bone Crusher. Hopefully, we get them in the line. Um, but so far, like from the Bumblebee that I've got, it's really well done. And I hear the Optimus has a couple of flaws, but um, that's really well done too. And I hope I, we actually get a movie on Megatron uh, done well because that could be really cool. Yeah. Yeah. But um, yeah. <clears throat> now, Brad alluded to this earlier. Uh, we are going to move on to the next story, which is that uh, <laughs> there was a there was a story that came through yesterday. I think it was that uh, Takara is actually reissuing. Uh, Legends Metroplex. So uh, he comes through as an LG EX figure this time around. It, he used to be Takara TG23 in 2013. Um, and there's my cat just jumping up in front of the camera. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, so this is this is a slight change. I think his guns are a slightly different color. There's a little, little bit of a different paint job on him just to differentiate him. Uh, he is coming out early twenty eight, early twenty eighteen for twenty seven thousand yen. Being an being an EX release, I believe he is a Takara Tomy Mall exclusive as well. Hmm. So, um, Brad, you said you were going to get this guy, didn't you? Ooh. I wouldn't mind picking this one up. Hmm? I've got the I've got the Hasbro one, but this one's just got a lot more detail on it. Hmm. As Metroplex, does it? All that oh. that. The fire and hip detail there. I don't. I don't recall if that was on the original. Yeah, no, fair, fair enough. So it's. I mean, the details there. It just wasn't painted and lined well, up. Oh yeah, yeah, such. yeah. The yeah. the color or the gray. Um, so Brad, the, the if sticker you sheet. Want to save money on this? You might as well just go because I mean the the Repro label set actually does give the 
generations and Metroplex, the silver thighs, and it looks really good. Like you can hardly tell they're stickers. Um, yeah. But I I do agree with you. This it it looks different enough, and it looks really good. It actually looks like some of the details are actually tainted this time and not stickers, and that's mm. why I think it looks a bit better. Oh, that, yeah, oh, that seems just, quite likely, right? Yeah, this doesn't yeah. look like it's had the stickers applied yet. Like all this is paint detail, not yeah stuff applied. But um, it looks great. Um, I mean, just from from these pictures, it looks much better. It looks like the best release of this figure that we've got. I think. Yeah. So just uh, in terms of currency conversion, twenty seven thousand Japanese yen is about three hundred and fifteen dollars. So, this uh, guy, yeah, I think I've just killed it for Brad, right? <laughs> Possible. Um, yeah, he's gonna. I remember, uh, he's a big boy. Yeah, he made all the money from the first release. So, <laughs> this is a freebie. Yeah. No, I was, I was talking. To I, I, I don't remember. think I'm. I don't think I'm too concerned about Takara Tami's budget. I'm more concerned about my wallet. Yeah. <laughs> now, I was talking yeah. to a member yesterday just about some of these earlier Titan Master or Titan class figures and just how hard, even like people trying to find Devastator now and stuff like that, you're looking up over two hundred dollars on eBay. And yeah, but like two hundred bucks was two hundred bucks was where it was when it first got released, and that was that was the big W price, and we know that that was that we know that, that was cheap and it was meant to be two ninety nine. So like, if it's going for two hundred bucks, so be it. I honestly find that it ain't that hard to find Devastator or Metroplex. All you got to do is wait a couple of weeks and they'll come up in the group. Mm. You know, it's not that hard. It, it is hard if you're impatient. Yes. Right. Oh, no. I still haven't seen Fort Max here except for in mine. I'm not paying for really? it. Oh, though. okay. Fair enough. Yeah. Maya are stacked to the brim. They've got yeah. a whole blood. They've got like a three shelved table and just all. No, wait. Yeah, We're but talking about Fort Max, yeah, yeah, yeah Fort Maxes. But horrible. but again, he comes up in the group for sale in the in the buy sell trade group. Mm. Yeah. So like, if you want one, you can go out and get one. Mm. I yeah. love the vibrant colours and it just looks really really good, especially in the um like chesty area of Metroplex. Mm. Yeah, I was just, I was just looking at the um because we're looking at base mode here, and so mm. um there's a there's a, sort of this area where there's a lot of yellow and red. Um, mm. Does arm, his left shoulder. His arm open up so Scamper can sit in it. I think that's an attachment onto it. Oh, okay. No, nah, no. Nah, so the arm, there's so there's a panel. Oh, no, it looks like it flips open. Yeah. Yeah, it flips open. Then the gun moves forward, and then Scamper can sit in there. Oh well. Wow. So um, did you not know that? No. <laughs> have you wait, have you have you ever wait have you ever had it? Wait, that. No, this is new. Don't tell me the original one's got that. What do you mean? The original one's got the arm um, feature. Looks like it. Should have. Brad's gone to get it. It does. Of course it does. <laughs> Fort, Fort, Fort Max has it, but um, there's no gun on it. It's just in a completely hollow uh, area. Return forthwith with Metroplex in his hand, and you can hear the ratchets going. Has he left? He's going to get Metroplex. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. <laughs> Okay, have you figured it out, Brad? No, out of fear of breaking, I wasn't going to go any further. Huh? You Hasbro. couldn't open it. The Has Hasbro one? Yeah. The arm opens. The the yes, his right arm opens to reveal that. I'm not I'm not joking, Brad. <laughs> there you go. Had the figure for three years and just figured that out. Someone doesn't read yeah. their instructions. No, I was gonna say the problem is no. the instructions are still in the box, right? Yeah, they're still <laughs> with the stickers wrapped up in their pocket. <laughs> No, the instructions are actually in that arm piece, so that's why he hasn't been able to do it. <laughs> Fair enough. So as we're looking, at, uh, like, as we're looking at this story and commenting on the price of it, I can see comments on TFW. People are like, "Oh my god, I missed this first time around. I'm ordering it now." It's like, wow. Yeah. <laughs> really. I get. I, I guess those are the people who really want the Japanese version. So. Yeah. Uh, shall Rome. Shall we move on? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So uh, Perfect Effects Black Genrai uh, is coming along nicely. So let me just put that up there and head over here. So uh, yeah, so Perfect Effects PC20 is uh, nearing release and he's, he's scheduled, scheduled to make his appearance to us in November 2017. It's just good that they did specify 2017 and not just November because it could have been any time then. <laughs> um, now, this guy is this guy's intended to match up with another existing figure, isn't he? 
Yes, the skateboard exclusive one. The uh, what's it called? The uh, what really? He matches up with the yeah, Power, yeah. Power Master Prime, doesn't he? Is that what you're saying? Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. So he might he match. This one is made for the Power Master Optimus Prime, made by Primitive Skateboarding, whatever. So, because if you look on the cab, there's actually a bit of gold, and it oh, actually matches it's, the, yeah, yeah okay. it's a replacement cab yeah. section. Yeah, yeah, that's because yeah, I was going to say it looks like a Legends figure. He's got those ball jointed shoulders. I was going to say if he's a Legends yeah. uh, leader figure, that's that's some really poor engineering for a leader. No, figure, no, but... he's he's probably scout to to um, deluxe ish. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, nice. Wow. So uh, from the from the Facebook post, where you can see that he does come with the figure, it comes with the breastplate, interchangeable hands, uh, a laser gun, a neck kit, and a combine helmet, which I think is what we're looking at there. Combine. Mm. There's some of the other pieces there as well. So um, mm. when you put him all together, that's how he looks. Oh, hello. Yeah, so that's the primitive skateboarding. Uh, and that's clearly photoshopped. <laughs> but um, I or, think or, it or it's really, taken really under a particular... Oh, well, yeah, okay. Oh, so the figures... Oh, look at the head. <laughs> it <laughs> looks like Photoshop. Um, yeah, look, it probably is like um, processed and stuff. So, yeah. But yeah. This looks really cool. Like, I love it. Like, with the primitive thing and just the Nemesis Prime or Scourge, whatever you want to go for. Um, it looks really good. And I've, I've admired this little mold that they've, they've made now three color variants of. Uh, I think it's pretty cool. And I love how it comes with little if there's, hands as well. If there's one thing the Perfect Effect can do, it's make recolors of their existing molds, right? <laughs> and <laughs> make tiny figures. Who's got the all the combiner upgrade kits? <laughs> mm. At one point, I did, yep. <laughs> Yeah. Uh, yeah, at one point I had multiples, yeah. I, I get the feeling with the uh, with the combiner upgrade kits, I think after the first two or three, we were sort of like, fuck, we've got to pay 40 bucks for the, this foot again. <laughs> again. Exactly. And, then, and, then, and then I think it just sort of became a case of like, oh, there's KOs of them. I think I might just get Yeah. And I, I never figured out how to transform the feet. I didn't look at the instructions. I never, I never, I never bothered. Well, no, nah. I just did the foot. I didn't need them to transform into Gatling guns for the aerial bots and that. It's just... I didn't need that. I just need hands and feet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but so, I, um, there's, I, I there's, quite, there's I quite matching up with the primitive uh, robot mode. Uh, sorry, the alt mode, the, the truck there as well. It's gorgeous. It works perfectly. I prefer the other, the original one for it though. The cab. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know why there's a requirement to replace the cab. What's going on? Yeah. Well, it's the, it's the it's the original Hasbro one with the horrible. You know how it has like the tiny little slit for the. But um, the paint, the paint just highlights it so much better than what the original figure did. I don't think they've got. What do you mean? Better, but just, just the way the paint, the painted windows, the gold lines around the torso, and that, and the, the uh, pecs, it just, it makes the detail and that stand out a lot better on, um, the original primitive figure than what it did on the Takara or the, or on, on the think, Hasbro. I don't think they should have painted the rims because <laughs> that does look a bit odd. With the with the back ribs being unpainted. Yeah, good point. Actually, that's what happens when you buy a third party figure. <laughs> well, you know, no, yeah. no, you know what that means upgrade kit. Yeah. Another oh, the seventeenth upgrade yeah. kit for this set. Be, yes. Yeah, you know, an extra twenty five dollars gets you replacement wheels with wheels. painted hubcaps. God, no thanks. Ah, uh, we're cynical. Mm-hmm. Or uh, they'll just make the trailer. They'll make their own trailer for it. Pros- <laughs> yeah, quite possibly. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't put a pass on. <laughs> uh, let's move on, shall we? Because um, I kind of already did. Sorry. Um, we've got we got uh, so we've got Mass Toys Skiff. Uh, he's coming up for he's coming up for release pretty soon. Is, is that, that's what's going on. He's actually he's turned up at TF Nation. Uh, a, a blue repaint of this figure has turned up as TF Nation's first exclusive uh, convention exclusive figure. But um, yeah, Mass Toys Mass, Mass Toys. Skiff. If, mm. I, keep, I keep trying yeah, to make sure yeah. that I get that right. Uh, yeah, so yeah. he is the uh, he's a, a, a modern reimagining of uh, Bumblebee's Cybertron mode. Mm. Yeah, he come up from, from, from about the, the, the first ago. ten seconds of the uh, yeah. first <laughs> yeah, G1 episode. episode exactly. Um, so yeah, he's he's a, he's a little figure. There's um, I was going to say there's no robot pictures, but there he is. He's um, uh, he's mm. a slight shell former. A slide. <laughs> <laughs> wow. But it's sort of, it, it comes up like last week when you were talking about um, Bold Form Spring 
mm. and um, and how it's sort of like a a masterpiece bot for the retail price. Like I think, you, I think, you, mean, I think you mean open and play spring. The big, yeah, that's big spring. spring. Yeah, big spring. Was, yeah. I didn't know what you're going on about there with Brad. I'm just like what old form. <laughs> okay. Um, um, yeah. yeah, and this no, is only. I, I like that shot. I like yeah. I like the shot of uh, of him up next to Masterpiece Bumblebee. It does give you a good idea of the size, which yeah, um, seems about right. You know? Yeah, yeah. His face about, looks his like face, he's older than his he. His face looks terrible. Let's just yeah, yeah. let's call the spade a spade. Face. Yeah, look, a lot of third party, a lot of third party companies, um, they uh, yeah, they mess up the landing when it comes to face sculpts. Um, yeah. The rest, the rest of the body can have some quite ingenious transformations on it, but mm. uh, the face just looks rubbish. I don't know what's going on with him there. This is the first things. figure too. It's not really an excuse. The, yeah. I mean, the, the way the third party market works these days, like there's designers all over the place. One company will commission multiple designs for a figure. Then all those designers uh, who don't get their figure made, they go off to other companies and that's how you get multiple Springers, multiple Insecticons, multiple Devastators made is that everyone's shopping their designs around. So there's no reason just because they're a new company they're working, they're working with designers that already exist in the industry. There's no reason for that face sculpt to be as bad as it is. Mm. So, yeah. Um, I'm, assuming, but, I'm assuming that we're working with, we're looking at a prototype here because the panel lining or the, the little subtle lining done at the top of his legs looks a bit poor as well. Yeah. <laughs> mm. So he's got little gun storage in the top of his shoulder, on the tip of his shoulder pads, which is something, I guess. Yeah. <coughs> um, yeah. yeah, he looks pretty cool. Um, and he also he also comes in a gold version too, which does he? I've got both yes. of them available for purchase. BST group. Oh, there he is oh. there. <laughs> okay, that looks that looks hot because they've actually they've actually gone for a color that's not uh, just like black and gold. Bring the blue in from Goldbug. That looks fantastic. Ooh, I like that. Them. Looks really nice. Sorry, I had a bit of a um, delay, but that looks. <laughs> Stunning, really. That, uh, then, you know, you can't go wrong with a faceplate. So, <laughs> exactly. Right. Yeah, that, you're totally right. This this actually nails the face skulls because you can't mess that yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that looks great. Yeah, and I after just uh, else, you know, yeah, well, I got figure. I got a couple for sale. I'll, I'll send you a PM. But um, I the there's still um prototype images here too because I don't think their legs are that sort of a. I'm pretty sure he's gold all the way down and not that. Different, the blue leg color. No, the leg color, like that chocolate caramel, whatever oh, you want to call it. Yes, I see what you mean. Um, I don't. I think it depends how he transforms. So if you look at this, oh, you can see okay. the, this shiny gold on the shoulders, but yep. the, the legs. And then are, the gold yeah. plastic. Uh oh, that's not a good sign. <laughs> unless unless his legs are fully contained inside that gold body. Yeah, I think. Yeah, that's right. probably what that's probably but happens. If you, if you look at that, I, I reckon they are. Yeah. It's so funny, this vehicle mode. It looks like something that's going to go and fly, fly away, but it's a driving thing. This stuff is actually from June, it turns out. Yeah, yeah, yeah this is, yeah. So is this guy, must is he just coming up for release this week? Yeah, my supplier's just got him in now and started to ship him out, so. Oh, cool. Yeah, right, nice. we've, known about, we've known about him for a couple of months, but just, we just never talked about him. I'm glad, I'm glad, so. we, uh, I'm glad we took a moment out to advertise your uh, sale. <laughs> Was this company ever called Mars Toys? No. Okay. What do, what what does M A A S stand for? Uh, good question. Uh, it is a good question. I thought I'd ask the person who's trying to sell the toy. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> um, anyway, let's, shall we move on? Do we have do we have much more to say about him? Do we need a masterpiece Cybertronian and Bumblebee? Because uh, if you, version, yes, if I hope Will Jackson yes, next. <laughs> Oh, well, that would be oh, interesting. That would be super interesting. I'd love to see that box come to life. Yeah, and this would have to fit in it, of course. Ah, uh, ooh. So there's a scale issue. <laughs> yeah, that's going to be... No, huge. there's no scale issues. They don't exist. No scale, yeah. <laughs> no, scale and Transformers does not exist. Oh, yeah, shall we move on? Uh, there's a couple... Yeah. Couple of couple of last night stories to round us out for the uh, for the night. It hasn't been the hasn't been the most exciting news week, but hey, you know we'll we'll make it what we will. Now uh, there's been a there's been a bunch of movie posters doing the rounds in Japan for the last night, and uh, I think it, it actually it comes out it came out last week on yeah last Friday in Japan. So um, all of the wow. all, all of the excitement, the build up, the anticipation, and the disappointment. 
Uh, <laughs> we, we went through like a, a month or so ago. Uh, they've they've gone through now in Japan over the last week. But they got slightly different versions of the posters that we got, and I think so. Brad, you've got um, you've got the Bumblebee and the Prime version of these posters with the local release, which basically just had like the uh, sepia toned Instagram filter applied to them. Whereas, and uh, the lens flare. yeah, and yeah, but there's no sun on those either. And the JJ lens flare, but yeah. So these yeah. are the these are the Japanese versions of the posters, and you know, what? it's quite it's actually quite nice to see the original, or, you know, original ish. Colors of them. There's prime there. The amount of detail that you can, the detail that comes out when you're not actually looking at something. It's all in the same, sort of the same color. Your eye just sort of slips over it then. But mm. I, I'd never noticed, never noticed the star on the on the breastplate and the amount of detail on the sword is, you know, really mm. quite nice. Uh, we've got the same thing for Megatron here. Oh, hey, we do have the lens flare for Megatron. Oh, there you go. Yep. Yeah. yeah. There's still some sort of an effect on the. They're, like, they're really vibrant colors. Yeah, it's al- it's almost really. like it's almost like they've had a HDR filter applied to the original colors. Yeah. So yeah. I, I guess you know there's there's some filters for the Western world and there's some filters for Japan. <clears throat> Bumblebee still has the lens flare as well, but uh, and he's got his hammer too. But uh, yeah, I'm pretty happy with them. <clears throat> mm. I like them. They look cool. Definitely better than the whatever we had. Did anyone notice the little uh, crossed out Decepticon logo on Hound's uh, Hound's gun? Huh. See, that's the kind of thing that you just don't notice when it's when it's all you know treated down to a single color. It's just like, oh, yeah, that's Hound. But not only that, you don't notice that on screen either when they're moving and bouncing, jiggling around. And... Of course not. Yeah. <laughs> Especially when Hound's jiggling around. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. So the last the last thing there's been a there's been a spate spate of um, behind the scenes production art and concept art that's coming out for the last night over the last I'm going to say the last month or so there's been, there's been something that has come up every week and we've sort of we've shied away from putting in the podcast just because I find it a little bit boring looking at his his concept art every week right yeah but, there's um, been multiple multiple multiples that I've had to keep away <laughs> yeah this this week's this week's one I think is I think it's quite interesting so um We've got we've got some concept art for a battle scene that never occurred in the movie, at least that we've seen, uh, around uh, the Eiffel Tower in Paris. And we, we were commenting about this earlier in the uh, earlier before the show started. That um, if you so if you sort of took out the Eiffel Tower backdrop and just replaced it with a starscape, like you just you just sort of have a generic space battle going on. Mm. Is that is the ship that we're looking at one of the um, one of the night ships that uh, crashed? One of the ones that brought the the thirteenth night to it. Yeah. So basically, they've just reused this thing for the like every single movie except for like the first two, I believe. So in yeah, come up in Dark of the Moon. Yeah, Dark of the Moon. They were the Decepticon drop ships in. Fair enough. Yeah. They were scattered all there, and then they just they just reused <coughs> the same thing. But yeah, I've always liked their design and. Um, but yeah, these are these these are the staple generic bad guy ships and good guy ships apparently. Yeah, cool. Mm-hmm. Oh, I, I I like the look. Uh, Mikey, you said that you said it looks like a hot video game, right? Oh, it looks so good. I wish it. It was. looks like a good game. Yep. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Nothing to do with Transformers though. No. Mm. No. Um, so there is. So there's this shot. This there's this shot of one of the Unicron horns. Now. I really quite like this shot. Actually, we we didn't really talk about these uh, too much before we came on the air. I quite like this shot because it actually shows it, it shows the growth of the horn disrupting uh, disrupting part of human civilization as well because it's actually destroyed a road there. Whereas I think all of the shots that we saw of them in the movie they were a little more distant and so they they didn't sort of have the detail of things up close and they were just they were a little bit more remote as well like you know in the middle of sand dunes and stuff like that yeah and that was one of the things like you imagine this coming out through the middle of a city or something wasn't wasn't one of the ones in the movie was fairly close to a populated area i thought mm. probably uh, <laughs> no i can't remember to be honest yeah. I, i've only seen it once to be honest i can't i can't tell you that much but uh, the other thing that i quite appreciate about this is that it's so a lot, a lot of the shots of the, the horns in the movie, they were like brightly lit, distant shots. And this is a little bit darker. It's a little bit more ominous. And I think the birds flying past the, the top of the frame really just adds to it. Mm. Yeah, so, yeah, flying away from it. 
Yeah, I mean, isn't that, mind you, like for birds to be flying away startled from something, it must have just appeared instead of growing its way. <laughs> you know, the, the, birds, the birds are obviously sitting there going like, watch it, watch it. All that free get it. Holy <laughs> shit, it's at 150 metres flea. <laughs> the seagulls, if they watch it for three days, it's still coming. They, they were watching it for three <laughs> days. They thought, they thought it might feed them. <laughs> yep. There's one just sitting on the tip of the horn mine. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, there's, so there's also a look at Mohawk. Um, mm. Does anyone care? No. I didn't realise until I've seen this, he's got um, the Ravage, Revenge of the Fallen Ravage legs. Mm, yeah. Oh, he's just too um, spindly. And but yeah, worse. I just... Worst worst bot in the movie. <laughs> oh, yes. Concerned. And he could still be alive is the great thing, you know? Yeah. Fantastic. He got, he, he, got, he, he got beheaded. Yeah. Um, what's the, what's this dude's name? He was like um, Bulldog, Bulldog, I think. Bulldog, that's the one. Yeah. So this this so this shot of Bulldog is is an old British tank from like World War One. Um, he looks fantastic here. Oh, so good. Mm. Like really, really, really dig the design. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't really dig his accent or his um, you know his facial design. Like I don't, there's or no his reason. dementia. Yeah, I don't know, the, the dementia, or whatever. But like there's no reason for him to have a, a British. Um, soldier's hat as on his <laughs> no, not really. Um, yeah, Thank that's kind of silly. Thank you, designers. But uh, yeah, yeah no, this, this looks this looks really good. Um, oh, and... toy, please, please. Toy. That'd be so please. good. Never gonna happen. Uh, Prime One Studios. <laughs> toy, Prime One Studios toy. No. <laughs> and, and I'm not really sure what. Not really sure what we're looking at here. Just looking looking at the design here, I'm actually wondering if this is meant to be. This is actually meant to be a, a, a transformer that um, Bulldog might have gone up against. In World War One, isn't the isn't the isn't the insignia on here? Is that a German cross from World War One? That is. Yeah, yeah. but it's got saying that, as well. Saying that Warpath can be a Decepticon name, so. Um, True. Maybe maybe, oh, maybe the concept was Warpath. Could you imagine the fan outcry if we had a German oh. tank called Warpath? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, probably. But again, I think this is the first worse time than the hot rod height. <laughs> I think this is the first time I've seen it though, and I, I yeah, it yeah, looks just as good as a bulldog. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Really, really cool. I dig it. Yeah, bulldog sort of reusing some of the aspects from Revenge of the Fallen Megatron, but um. Yeah, you're right. Around, around his feet, right? Yeah, just yeah. the way the tracks sort of form his feet and that, but. Mm. The one thing I'm not the one thing I'm not really a fan of with this is this giant gaping chasm inside his legs. Yeah. And the medals on the chest. <laughs> Who's printing those? I, I, I was gonna things? say they look like medals. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's going too much towards the human looking. And in fact he looks like he's got the sort of the Germanic uh, oh, yeah. mustache and beard and stuff. So yeah. He's got the red baron beard going on there. And the piercing red eyes, I think. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. So look, look, look the, I would say that some of the some of the reveals of behind the scenes, or not not behind the scenes, but concept art and stuff, none of them have quite been as fun as these ones were this week. So yeah. I'm really glad we looked at these. I'm also really glad we didn't look at the others. Yeah, <laughs> I believe that uh, that black star is the uh, symbol for the Wolflofter, the aircraft, mm. or the air force over there. So interesting to see that on a tank. Maybe he turns into an anti-aircraft gun. Maybe he's Blitzwing. Oh, I was about to Maybe say. he is. Yeah. Because we, yeah, we didn't see that, but we, I'm pretty sure this is the one we've seen in the um, the old photos. With maybe, leading maybe, the... maybe that's where these guys came from. Because they, yeah. they may have actually been designed for use in like silhouette and stuff like that. But yeah. yeah. Maybe Revenge that... of the Fallen pictures. Maybe. There's no way this guy's a, a triple changer. He hides it well. <laughs> oh come on! What about Drift being a triple changer? Where, when do we ever see any helicopter parts on him? Mm, good point. Aha! Uh-huh. <laughs> nah, nah, not seeing it. Not, 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 <laughs> you don't get that one. Boo! All right, uh, that is it for news. Let's let's go quickly through the uh, the new acquisitions for the week, and then we'll call it a, call it a night, shall we? Uh, Lovely. I, I say quickly because I don't have any new acquisitions this week, but. Uh, like, like we talked about a little bit at the start, I do have this lovely display behind me, which um, I'm really happy with. It's taken me a long time to get to it. But uh, Brad, you and Mikey have the same figure. Hmm. Well, I'll talk about it first because I'm only going to talk about one mode. Um, Spoiler. <laughs> yeah, broadside. 
Titans will turn broadside. Yeah, Titans will turn broadside. Um, <laughs> I've been Nazi and so much on the young fella not to lose the Superion Jets. <laughs> Oh, getting them put in a cockpit and everything else, but um, it's just a great, a great aircraft carrier. And mm-hmm. the reason, the reason I wanted to get it <laughs> was because if you have a great aircraft carrier, <laughs> you want to, you want to put them together like father and son. Better yet, <clears throat> better yet, if I do a little thing here, unpeg down some. Mm, that's not going to work. <laughs> they almost look the same. Oh, my <laughs> God. <as> well. <laughs> you just haven't got the cockpit for the little dude to sit in the middle. So, yeah. Okay. I'll, I really well, want to paint it. Depth well, future content. retail. Yeah. But, um, no, I got to meet up with um, Tim Spurrick in Canberra yesterday and discuss some stuff, got that off him, and uh, he donated some uh, of the late... Generations comics and Combiner Wars comics to the club and some uh, Titan Masters as well. So that was good of him to do, and um, that'd be good for some upcoming conventions and events we do. Yeah, sounds good. Yep. That's that's mine done. Max, uh, Max Marky, <laughs> show us the other two modes. Uh, well, I'll show One you. One at a time. <laughs> so this is Titans Returns Broadside. Now, that's the uh, X. That's. Uh, um, That's that, that, that is, is the next part, which is the upgrade kit. Is the upgrade oh, okay. kit, as well as repro label. But um, <laughs> so this is the non F uh, upgrade kit, which includes wow, it just went really dark. It did. Um, <laughs> it might the lighting in here is just the bloody worst. Open up, anyway. open up, open up the new tab in your web browser and send it to a white page. <laughs> four, four. You may laugh, but it will work. So wait, open up the new tab. That's all right. Don't worry about it. It's working. Yeah, that's okay, right. yeah. yeah because anyway, so this um, non-F Productions is what he's called. And um, he unfortunately doesn't ship to Australia. Um, so I, I think I went, I went through you, Jason, didn't I? Um, oh, did, did I buy this for you? Well, yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah so I went through that's you fantastic. and then... Yes. So you did get some this week, Jason. <laughs> apparently, well, I, I, apparently I did. Yes. Um, so what this, it's not just an upgrade kit through the gun, so the weapon. So this is his, um, modeled off his G1, uh, gun and his G1 axe, which is really cool. But it also has, it doesn't um, look a thing like a guitar. <laughs> what? Why Don't would it have a guitar? Never mind, carry on. Oh, I hope you explain that later. Um, it also has these pieces, which, uh, fill in the hollow areas here. So it makes oh, it yeah, so, yeah, fillers are always good, right? Yeah, oh, yeah, much more sturdy. Mm-hmm. Also, the thighs. You have little thigh bits, which they look really good from front on. Gives them a bit more beef. And um, also, it. I also got the repro label set because um, I think I can do this fairly quickly because it makes the it makes the uh, carrier mode. Uh, it just improves it so much. Um, mm. Yeah, while you're doing that, I, I, I'm surprised how big it actually is, especially in carry mode. I was yeah. expecting it to be like flat top in size. Is he a leader having... or a Voyager? He's a Voyager. Voyager. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, I was on the. I jumped on the. There you go. I jumped on the. Oh, why isn't he a leader or a Titan <laughs> early wow. on when we, when we see him? Yeah. And still hope for that, but um, oh, the sticker's coming off. No. <laughs> That's exactly it, why as well, because those the stickers. On this set, oh, hinge. Off yeah. when you touch them, unfortunately, they're foil stickers and they're terrible. Yeah, I'm really, the, the, top. the reason I asked whether he's uh, Voyager or Leader class is because he said he's he's larger than you expected him to be, and um, for, I actually picked up for the first time at the uh, Hoggy Breath Cafe meetup a couple of weeks ago. Uh, yeah. I actually I picked up Titans Return Blaster, and I was just like, "This is tiny," and he's a Leader class figure. Yeah, like I know, I know the volume really increases as you sort of transform into robot mode, and you know the the speaker components sort of fold, fold around his legs. But like, really, it's so it's really quite small considering he's meant to be a ghetto blaster. Well, you, yeah, so you sit that beside the Megatron, the Combiner Wars Megatron, for instance, and just how much bigger and massier that oh, massier, how much bigger and how much more mass that tank's got <laughs> compared right. to the 
Gecko Blaster, but totally. Um, it's just Gecko like, Blaster. I, 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 I know you meant to say Gecko Blaster, but I do think the Gecko Blaster is probably more appropriate. <laughs> That's fine. Yeah. So the, the the stickers on here are just 100% better. They, they that looks more, way better. Yeah. You Brad, get more Brad, yours, ramps. yours looks terrible by comparison. <laughs> yeah. So you get all that stuff. Um, also, this kit, whenever you turn it into jet mode, uh, well, the unofficial jet mode, um, it helps you. Uh, the axe actually tabs in and helps lock the unofficial jet modes um, thing uh, into conf- into place because it's not. But even even just going back on size, like I've got um, Lino there, and even when you stretch him out, he um, he doesn't seem as big. Is what this is, just because you can sort of point the feet, point the legs. Who have you got? Uh, Alpha yeah, Trion. A, uh, you said oh. Lino, I'm just like... I'm just it's, the, it's the Alpha Trion mould, isn't it? I don't know. I've never owned it, to be honest. I thought it was. Maybe it's um, not. Well, don't you have both of them, Brad? Yeah, but he's in toilet mode, so... He's a space toilet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not using it for a lost space line. That's stupid. So... Um, this is the jet mode that they suggest you make. And then um, the axe there actually helps um, tab these two sections together, whereas if not, if you didn't have the axe there, um, it would just be all flimsy. And then you just put the gun on the bottom and then... It's quite clever. Yeah, yeah, it is a really good set. So whenever you put it down, it lands on... It, it's, uh, it stays right. up. And then that section gets tabbed in together. And then the jet just looks <laughs> 10 times better than whatever the hell they were going for with that other thing. So I can't recommend the non-F upgrade enough for this guy because it makes this guy pretty much perfect. And also the repro label set is awesome as well. I mean, it yeah. just makes it look so much better. Yeah. Yeah. No, glad I picked him up and he's, uh, he's my new favorite figure. He's a great toy. Gold claim. Right, love it. Mm-hmm. Oh, well, we need more aircraft carriers. <laughs> I could not agree more. Mm-hmm. We need a tidal wave, right? and not just a repaint of, um, not just a repaint of. Uh, yeah. Sky. We need a, a big lot. ass Titan class. At least uh, one liter. Wave. At least a liter. But anyway, I, can't, I, I, can't, I kind of feel like I don't really want. Um, I don't really want Hasbro to have to work on designing multiple aircraft carriers. I'm fine. I'm <laughs> fine with them just doing one. <laughs> Oh, yeah, no, I've got nowhere to put them, but I'd love to see it. <laughs> the SS flag, what's it called? The USS yeah, flag? It. We should get a uh, that that turns into tidal wave or broadside or whatever. We need something like that. And, flag yeah, that's forms. all we got this week. Flag that is forms. it. Yeah. Um, look, I, I think it's uh, time to time to go to the end of the show. Um Speaking about some uh, TCDA Club events, it is membership renewal season and it has been election season. So there will be, there will be uh, since we are into club news, we, there is a new committee coming out on Monday. Uh, it's, we, we renewed the committee for the third season with some cast changes. and uh, <laughs> New voices. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We've actually gone with non-union voice actors. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, um, first order of business for the club is going to be to figure out which conventions, toy fairs, and trade days uh, we are going to be attending near members. They don't have to be they don't have to be headlined by state reps and committee members. If you've got an event that's going on near you and you want to put some TCCA stuff out there, then get in touch. We'll send you some flyers and some you know some some goodies and things like that. So yeah, hey, yeah. Uh, we do want to compile a list of what's out there because ev- this happens every year. This has happened for the last two years. Uh, we go to Supernova and we go to a few smaller cons and then inevitably we get people going, why don't you go to this? And it's like, well, you didn't tell us. So, uh, you know, you, you didn't tell us that this event existed, so we just don't know. You when. didn't invite us. There is, in fact, me. surprise, no central list of all of the you know, pop culture and fan events that happen around the country every year. So if there's something on and you want to go represent TCCA, pull up a table, um, you know, we're, we're more than happy to do it. Just come and talk to us about it. And so yep. there will be a representative in your state or local area that you can talk to about it. Or you can just, just message Brad and um, have a chat. Yep. We'll, we'll get yeah. something organised. Yeah. Um, 
So if you do want to become a, a financial paid supporting member of the club, you can find details at transformerscca.com. Starts for as little as five bucks a year and you get a few, you get a few goodies back in return for that as well. Uh, last thing, we do occasionally do members only giveaways. So congratulations to Haley Anderson who won a Masterpiece Loud Pedal. We were mentioning last Masterpiece Loud Pedal earlier as well. And uh, Andrew Dunn has won a signed comic, which you might recall seeing me read on the podcast a few weeks ago. So uh, we will be getting those out to those winners in the next, the next week or so. And funnily yeah. enough, some members uh, take it into their own um, doings and they just do some competitions of their own. So, mm. and, and um, even uh, sometimes you don't even know you're entering a competition. Like I didn't, uh, they said, um, uh, Michael yeah, Miller. Michael Villa. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So he's just like, oh, put, 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 put a caption to this. And then everyone just started putting captions and he said, okay, so at the end of the, uh, at this time tonight, I'm going to release a, a winner because I've decided this is now a contest. And then I just ended up winning. And then he just messaged me and said, Hey, you've won. I'm just like, what, what? So um, <laughs> that, that was, <laughs> what, what have I done? Um, but no, that was very cool. So, I mean, um, yeah, join, join the group because there's lots of cool stuff like that just happens randomly. And I got myself a G1 wind charger through commenting on a thing. Yeah, so, nice. yeah, yeah, very cool. Uh, so I, I have actually had the same experience with Michael. We, he has been running these caption contests a little bit. I think I won the first one. And uh, nice. when I saw him at the, the Hogsworth Cafe a couple of weeks ago, he uh, gave me a, um, is it Titans Return or Combiner Wars pipes. Uh, so that's oh, yeah, sitting over on my shelf now. So uh, yeah, thank you very much, nice. Michael. Um, all right. <laughs> We're about to hit 20, 2,600 members. <laughs> That hundred, nice. that hundred went by pretty quick. They, they, they did go pretty fast, didn't they? Yeah. Um, all right. I think that is it. We are going to bring the podcast to a close. We are a little bit over an hour, but I think that's probably a good time for it. So Australian Transformers Weekly is produced by Transformers Collectors Club Australia. You can find out all about the club at transformerscca.com. You'll find the podcast on iTunes or your podcatcher of choice. And i got to say, um, I had a chat to the guys at Pocket Casts this week because the podcast was misbehaving on their service and they said that they have reset it and it appears to be working again now. So um, it just got slightly messed up when we changed the podcast name. So, um, But yeah, uh, that is, that's back up, working, back up and working now. Pocket Cast is on iOS and Android and is Australian made. So get on over in there and get it and install and support it. You can also find a brand new podcast that Brad is going to give us the quick spiel for called Transformers Legends. And uh, you can find it on Facebook and on the TCCA YouTube channel. Brad, take it away. Yeah, yeah me, and, uh, me and my son Dylan, where uh, we have about, a, oh, it's about a 20 minute show each week. Um, just looking at some of the, uh, the more um, Kid friendly news, not kid friendly news. Some of the stuff like the the RID rescue bots cartoons and that, and um, some of the stuff aimed at younger collectors. So, just short twenty minutes. It's only a YouTube video up at the moment. We uh, did release two episodes as a uh, trial run on the uh, Transformers Weekly uh, RSS feed, but I'm working on getting a uh, feed of our own up this week. So, we'll get links and everything up. We've got a Facebook page currently up. So. Go and uh, check out the I've got here the Transformers Legends podcast on Facebook, and um, everything will be posted there once we get the RSS feed up. Yeah, cool, nice, sounds good. And uh, that is the end of the show. So thank you very much for listening, and we will be back next week. Some of us will anyway. We might take Mikey out and shoot him. <laughs> That is that is that is quite possible. It's, it, it might happen, but we'll see. If that happens, Mikey will actually spin around really fast and turn into Max. We'll see oh. how it goes. And um, next time you see me, I will be another year older. So. Ah, sounds like a looming birthday. I have just yes. I have just the present for you. Is it age? Because that's that I don't like gauging. Aging nope. Is, is it a cake? <laughs> nope. It's uh, it might be RID blast wave. We'll see. <laughs> oh, very good. Okay, repurposing. <laughs> what? What? What's wrong? <laughs> <laughs> okay. This is the bread maker. Mm. Thanks, guys, Bye, guys. and uh, g goodbye, and uh, we'll talk to you next time. See you guys See you later.